Hello, it's the start of National Storytelling Week, so I'm going to aim during the course of this week to record and upload a selection of different stories on various themes suggested by friends, um, mostly via Facebook, but perhaps in real life as well. Um, one friend has suggested the theme of snakes. So this is the story, very short story admittedly, of the snake mother. Long ago, in a village deep in the heart of America, there lived a very wealthy couple rolling in money. They had everything that money could buy except the one thing which at that point in time money could not buy, and that was a child. Although having said that money could not buy a child, then as now, if you're rich enough, you can go to all sorts of people who will promise to use medications and techniques and so forth to try and bring a child forth into the world for you. And this they did. They, they spent a considerable sum going from one healer to another to another to another, and one would recommend herbs and another would recommend charms and another would recommend bathing in cold water and another would recommend bathing in hot water. They tried one technique after another, after another, after another. And over the course of nearly three years, a small fortune went and no child came. And having exhausted all of the respectable healers, all of the more, shall we say, upmarket purveyors of the ancient arts, they found themselves with only one option left. There was on the far edge of the village an old woman, an outcast from the tribe. We won't go into the story of why it's a long and a horrible one, but she had lived most of her life alone. And like so many people who live alone, she'd become stranger and more eccentric and more peculiar and, sad to say, less sanitary. She was ragged, more than a little pungent, and very, very strange. But they'd tried everyone else, and, well, they thought it was worth a go. So they went to visit the woman in her ramshackle abode. And it was the sort of place that the wealthy couple would never, ever normally be seen dead in, but... They went late one night hoping none of the neighbours would notice and they handed over a meagre sum to this woman and she began to dance around a cauldron hole suspended over the fire on chains. She poured water into this cauldron, she cast herbs into this cauldron, she cast a handful of shells into the cauldron, she cast some feathers and some berries into the cauldron, she stirred it first one way and then the other. She recited spells and charms above the cauldron and told the prospective mother and the prospective father to stand either side of the cauldron so they could inhale the aromas coming off the heated waters. When, she said, the cauldron begins to rumble begins to dance over the flames, that is when the spell will be at its zenith. Minutes rolled past. The chanting went on and on and on. The water became hotter and hotter and hotter, and slowly but surely the boiling water made the metal cauldron shake and shake and shake until it was dancing over the flames and the fumes coming off of it were positively intoxicating until neither the prospective mother nor the father could bear to be in that ramshackle little abode any longer, and they fled out into the night, coughing and spluttering, desperately drawing in lungs of clean air. The old woman called out to them that a charm was now required. The mother must wear a charm about her neck, but... They had had quite enough of the smell of the potion and the smell of the old woman uh, and the wretched state of, of, of the place where she lived and the things that moved around and skittered in the corners that none of them wanted to think about. And, well, the husband thought he had wasted his money, the wife thought she had wasted her time, and they stormed back off home, thinking no more of this crazy old woman. 
three days passed, and the woman had to admit she was feeling pains in her lower regions, feeling strange and odd, as, as if something were not quite as it should be. <coughs> and she'd almost forgotten that peculiar old woman, when there came a knocking at the door, and she opened it up, and there was this rancid old lady, looking stranger and madder than ever, and holding out to her a handful of beads, and said, you have forgotten your charm, the spell will not work until you take your charm. The wealthy woman was mortified to think this, this embarrassing, peculiar, deranged old woman, cackling and rancid, had wandered, smelling through the village, drawing attention of all of neighbours, come to the house, and she could see her other well-to-do neighbours peering out of their houses, uh, this this character arriving at her door. Uh, she, she snatched the beads and she told the old woman, go away, go away, before anyone else notices you're here, go on, be gone, be gone. And she was so rude, so offensive, and she didn't even pay for the beads when she slammed the door in the old lady's face, that the old woman muttered and snarled and moaned to herself and recited something that, well, I can't tell you about, otherwise you might recite it too, as she wandered away. And that very day, even though the beads had been slung into a corner, the wife, the rich wife, felt her stomach shifting and growing. And with every day that passed, she got bigger and bigger and bigger. And her husband rejoiced and she rejoiced. At last, the promised four babies were coming. She became bigger and bigger still. Bigger than one baby, big enough for two babies and then twins. How blessed can we be to have two? And if either of them thought this was down to the magic of the old crazy woman on the edge of the village, well, neither of them thought to mention it to the other, nor to the neighbours, nor to anyone who might become a customer of the crazy old woman. Nine months came and went, and the day of the birthing approached, and the woman's waters broke, and the blood began to come forth. There's Bigger and bigger and bigger she got, and she could feel all the children moving within her womb, writhing, positively writhing within her womb. So much movement it seemed unnatural, even for twins. And she screamed and she howled and she hollered, and the midwives came and everyone came to tend to her. And they were mortified when emerging from her womb was not a beautiful boy or a beautiful girl, or one of each or two of each, but the twin heads of serpents knotting and twisting around one around the other, emerging long and black with red heads and white collars around their necks, slithering out of the woman's room as she screamed and she howled as well you might to give birth to snakes. The two first snakes entered the world and everyone in the village was mortified. They backed away screaming and howling to see these strange, unnatural, limbless things coming out into the world. And they quickly slithered and slid away from the woman, away from the husband, away from the villagers, down towards the great lake. And in they dived. And for all we know, they live there still, growing bigger and bigger with every century that passes and spawning all of the other serpents that are in the world from that day to this. Thank you.